Glory to Jesus Christ. This Sunday is the Sunday of the Last Judgment, uh, the week before we begin the Great Fast. Uh, and on this Sunday, we read the parable of the Last Judgment in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Uh, so we'll now read uh, the commentary from the Blessed Theophylact on the parable of the Last Judgment. So he first comments on the first three verses, verses 31 to 33. Uh, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats, and he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left. And then from Theophylact we have, Since the first coming of the Lord was not with glory, but with dishonor and indignity, he says, when he shall come in his glory. For at the second coming, he will come with glory, escorted by angels. First, he will divide the saints from the sinners, delivering them from tribulations, and set them on his right, and then speak to them. He calls the saints sheep on account of their gentleness, and because they yield fruit and useful things for us, as do sheep providing wool, which is divine and spiritual protection, and milk, which is the sustenance that is needed. The goats are the sinners, for they walk along the precipices and are unruly and fruitless. And then verses 34 to 40. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. And then Theophylact writes, He does not give honor or punishment until he has first judged, for he loves mankind and teaches us to do the same as well, not to punish until we have made a careful examination. In this way, those who are punished after the judgment will have no cause for complaint. He calls the saints blessed, as they have been accepted by the Father. He considers them to be inheritors of the kingdom to show that God makes them participants in his own glory as his sons. For he did not say receive, but rather inherit, as a man would his father's estate. By the least brethren, he means either his own disciples or simply all the poor. For every poor man is Christ's brother, for the very reason that Christ too spent his life in poverty. See also God's righteousness, how he acclaims the saints, and see the good disposition of their mind, how they deny with befitting modesty that they have, been, that they have cared for him. But the Lord accepts as for himself the things that were done for the poor. And then verses 41 to 46. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me. You cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was thirsty, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And Theophylact writes, He sends those on the left into the fire which had been prepared for the devil. 
For as the demons are without compassion and are cruelly and maliciously disposed towards us, it is fitting that they who are of like mind with them and who have been cursed by their own deeds should merit the same punishment. See that God did not prepare the fire for men, nor did he make hell for us, but for the devil. But I make myself liable to hell. Tremble then, O man, and understand from this that these men were not punished as fornicators or robbers or perpetrators or any other vice, but for not having done good. For indeed, if you consider things well, the robber is he who has much and does not give alms, even if he does no obvious injury. For whatever he has in excess of his needs, he has stolen from those who are in need and who have not received anything from him. For if he had shared these things with them, they would not be in need. Now that he has locked these things up and kept them for himself, for this very reason they are in need. So he who does not give alms is a robber, doing injustice to all those whom he could have helped but did not. And for this reason he and those like him shall go away into eternal punishment, which never ends, but the righteous shall enter into eternal life. For just as the saints have unceasing joy, so too the unjust have unceasing punishment, despite the gibberish of Origen, who says that there is an end to hell and that sinners will not be punished forever, but that there will be a time when they enter the place of the righteous because they have been purified by suffering in hell. Origen is clearly refuted here, both when the Lord speaks of everlasting punishment, that is, never ending, and when he likens the righteous to sheep and the sinners to goats. For just as a goat can never become a sheep, neither can a sinner ever be cleansed and become righteous after the judgment. Outer darkness, mentioned in the preceding parable of the talents, is that which is furthest from the light of God, and for that reason renders the punishment more harsh. There is another reason that could be mentioned, and that is that the sinner is in darkness even in this life, as he has fallen away from the Son of Righteousness. But as there is still hope of conversion, this is not yet the outer darkness. But when he has died, and an examination has been made of the things he has done, then the outer darkness in its turn receives him, for there is no longer any hope of conversion, but he undergoes a complete deprivation of the good things of God. While he is here in this life, he enjoys to some degree the good things of God. I mean, the tangible things of creation, and he believes that he is in some manner a servant of God, living out his life in God's house, which is this creation, being fed by him and provided with the necessities of life. But then he will be altogether cut off from God, having no share at all in all the good things of God. This is that darkness which is called outer by comparison to the darkness here, which is not outer because the sinner is not yet completely cut off from this time onward. You then, O reader, flee from this absence of compassion and practice almsgiving, both tangible and spiritual. Feed Christ who hungers for our salvation. If you give food and drink to him who hungers and thirsts for teaching, you have given food and drink to Christ. For within the Christian there is Christ, and faith is nourished and increased by teaching. If you should see someone who has become a stranger to his heavenly fatherland, take him in with you. While you yourself are entering into the heavens, lead him in as well lest while you preach to others, you yourself be rejected. If a man should cast off the garment of incorruption which he had at his baptism, so that he is naked, clothe him. And if one should be infirm in faith, as Paul says, help him, and visit him who is shut up in the dark prison of this body, and give him counsel which is as light to him. Perform, then, all of these six types of love, both bodily and also spiritually, for we consist of both soul and body, and these acts of love 
are to be accomplished by both. And again, that's the parable of the last judgment. I uh, and I uh, and then I uh, again just the week before we enter into the great fast. Glory to Jesus Christ.